Hi, my name is Mark Leventhal. I used to be from Cleveland, Ohio, but I recently moved to Union, Kentucky. And my roommate is also someone who has CVID, like I do. Um, I'd like to talk about how I started in my path of IVIG. I think I'm one of the oldest patients around um, who has been on IVIG the longest. I was diagnosed in 1981 and was on the initial trials for IVIG in the US. Um, so it's interesting that I've stayed on the same bloodline of product. I remember some of the things when I was in trials with IVIG. One of the things that I remember re very clearly is we were into the study and we got an urgent call from uh, the person who was running the study. His name was Ricardo Sorensen. And he said, we need to come in to get our blood tested right away because there's a new virus that they don't know much about, but they think it might be transferred with, IV, with IG. So we went in, we had our blood tested, and I didn't have it. Well, the drug happened, the disease happened to be AIDS. And for um, our luck, uh, the AIDS virus transfers off to the hemophilia population. Uh, not, I don't want to be negative, but and that's why almost a generation of hemophiliacs were lost around the world. Um, so that was one. The other one I remember is my wife got a phone call and they asked her, is her husband um, acting strangely? And she responded, well, my husband always acts strangely. I don't know. They said, no, no, is he bouncing off walls? And she said, no. And they were looking at mad cow disease. So I've been around a long time. Um, I get my immune globulin at home. And uh, before I moved to Kentucky several months ago, I had had the same infusion nurse for 26 years. Um, I've had a great career. I've run large companies as large as 100 million in sales and 500 employees. Um, and my, in, in my particular form of CVID, of which there's probably two or 300, um, really hasn't kept me from doing much. Um, I, I ran large companies, I ran companies in bankruptcy, but I've had a very, very good career and I've been very fortunate about that. Um, some people are very sick with, with, with CVID. We know now that there's two or 300 different variations and they affect people very differently. They may have different genetic signatures. Um, we were in a study um, five or six years ago where the total genomes of my entire family and they were looking for a common defect among us. And, and so, you know, it worked out that three of us had it and one didn't. Um, so we now know exactly the gene that was affected. And this is how we're getting together a body of knowledge about this disease, which, you know, it will take time. Um, they think that in most cases, uh, immune deficiency, PI, comes from a combination of genes or a gene that needs an activation, but they really don't know yet. And so through research and people volunteering information, we're gonna build a database and hopefully we'll, we'll find something about it. One of the misconceptions is um, that people feel that we need to be sicker. We don't look sick. And one of the remarks people say all the time is, but you don't look that sick. We hear that a lot. Um, in our case, we don't hear it a lot because we've been high functioning. Don't know if that's the right word. But I think a lot of it is people just don't know. Um, even docs don't know, which is, which is very tragic. And we need to do a better job of talking to primary care docs and ENTs and, and spreading the word. I came across IDF eight, ten years ago maybe. And I had heard about a conference, the first uh, Disney World conference, and it was full. I couldn't get in. And I complained to Marcia and she said, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> I called the brand manager of my, my, my brand of immune globulin and had him call Marcia to, to get me in to no avail. And to this day, I kid Marcia about, um, you know, I'm here and I, you know, whatever. Um, so that's basically how I came about it. I volunteer in a lot of ways. A, I've been a peer support advocate for a long time before there was an organized volunteer section. Um, I walk for PI, I do advocacy. I've been on the Hill four or five times with IDF. Um, I have, I worked very hard with my state legislature who, who was, was a good friend to get skids passed in Ohio, skids testing passed in Ohio. 
Um, and I've done a lot of different things for IDF. Uh, I'm on Facebook a lot. I moderate one of the Facebook groups um, where there is now a Facebook group for moderators of immune deficiencies. And we talk about uh, people who want to get into the groups who really don't have PI. And um, it's, it's much better organized than it used to be. So that's my real story. Um, thank you. <laughs>